The town of Barnstable hosts several moving tributes for Memorial Day over the weekend. We get a look at several community preservation projects just approved by town council. And we have all the information you need to protect yourself from ticks this summer. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Tuesday, May 27th, 2014. I'm Sarah Mannell. The town of Barnstable honors fallen soldiers with two moving tributes this Memorial Day weekend. Boy Scouts from PAC 54, the Barnstable Police Department Honor Guard, and others attended the annual Memorial Day ceremony at the JFK Memorial in Hyannis yesterday. A flag that was flown at the Capitol on behalf of Congressman William Keating was raised during the ceremony. That flag will be presented to Barnstable West Barnstable Elementary School during their Flag Day ceremonies next month. Also during the ceremony, Barnstable High School senior Joseph Egan was presented this year's $2,500 John F. Kennedy Scholarship. Egan was one of three Barnstable High School seniors considered for that award. The Barnstable Police Department led off the Memorial Day Parade in Centerville yesterday. Chief of Police Paul McDonald says the event ran smoothly despite a little rain. Parade in Centerville. I mean, that can only be characterized as a Norman Rockwell parade. You know, uh, you know, small town parade, middle of Centerville, Main Street, Centerville. Such is such a beautiful street, and everybody comes out for that. There was a good crowd, even though it was raining. Uh, it was an awesome event for 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 everyone who participated. It was a great job by by the town. This summer tourist season is now in full swing. Chief McDonald says visitors packed the Cape for the holiday weekend. Uh, there was a lot of people down. I was out uh, all three nights. Um, downtown Main Street was jammed, all the restaurants and the bars, they seemed to be having a, a very good time. Everybody was enjoying themselves. Uh, there, was, uh, there was not that many problems. Uh, we handled almost 800 calls for service, um, but that is not, uh, if you look back over the years, comparing this Memorial Day weekend to other Memorial Day weekends, um, that, that's, that's right around the average number of calls. There was no uh, major events involving the police department. Police are investigating an incident that caused the closure of the Hyannis West Elementary School today. A body was discovered early this morning outside a back door of the school. Police say the incident is not related to the school in any way and the public is not in danger. Chief McDonald says the school was closed to allow police to conduct the investigation. The Barnstable Police Department receives praise for lowering the crime rate in Hyannis. Boston News WCVB came to Hyannis last week to highlight the work they have done in the community. Chief McDonald says the revitalization of Hyannis is really a team effort. The whole image of downtown Hyannis is being changed and changed dramatically. And this whole piece was about the revitalization of, of downtown Hyannis. You know, you know, what the police department has done, what the town has done, what the community has done, what the social services has done, what the bid has done, what the chamber has done. Everybody's worked so hard, so hard to change the, uh, you know, you know, the, uh, the vision of downtown Hyannis. And if you just look over this past weekend, you know, if you went out there at 10 o'clock on a Saturday, on a Friday or Saturday, Memorial Day week, there were still families down there, there's young kids down there, and everybody's having, having a great time. So the whole image of downtown Hyannis, that is definitely, definitely changed. And Channel 5 came down and they did, they did that great piece. And I think that was, uh, it was very positive for downtown Hyannis. And you can view that entire segment on WCVB.com. Chief McDonald says it was a very successful first week for the expansion of the NOAA shelter. Significant things happened last week. We started that community impact unit on Wednesday, and then the NOAA shelter opened on Thursday uh, full, um, full for a full 24 hours a day. The three officers we have, they're dedicated downtown Hyannis, and their job is not, to, is not to arrest people, but to refer individuals, dealing with homeless individuals, and to let people know that now we have these coffee houses being hosted by the Federated Church, and the shelter, shelter is being opened. Now, we, I've been down there, everybody's been down there, everybody's telling me they've noticed a significant difference of the appearance of downtown Main Street. So, and the whole idea, if it's nowhere is open 24 hours a day, the individuals who need the help, we know where they are. Now we can refer Vinfit and Duffy right to the people, right to the individuals, and their caseworkers can meet them at no and provide them whatever services they might need. So I think it's a great idea. It hasn't, it hasn't even been going on for a week, but we're having a meeting today to discuss it and see if, uh, see if we have to tweak it, see if we have to improve it, see if we change it, but what do we have to do? But it, it's a great start. The new day shelter program was modeled after a similar program in Salem, Massachusetts. 
Town Council approves several community preservation projects during last week's Town Council meeting. Director of Public Works Dan Santos says one project approved appropriated about $190,000 for renovations to the Burgess House Barn in Marston's Mills. Which is uh, really a fascinating pro property if you uh, look at some of the history of it. It was built uh, by the Hinckley's uh, in the early 19th century. Um, and there were three Hinckley homes, all of which are still there on this corner on Route 149. It was a um, uh, pretty amazing area. The barn, however, was actually there and predates the home. It's an 18th century barn, probably affiliated with an earlier home on the site. And it's had uh, quite, a, quite a history of use in the ensuing uh, 250 years, including uh, there was a, a meat processing facility there, and you can still see in one one portion of the barn the the, the meat. There's like a rail where they were sliding the, the you know the hung sides of beef and hooks, and it's pretty pretty interesting. Um, and then it, they put an apartment in at one point, and they built some additions on. Um, but this project, uh, really, what it's going to do is going to save this structure from really uh, collapse from neglect if it was let let go. It, it needs uh, to have the roof and the siding uh, all replaced, the windows that are there. Uh, the floor is actually collapsing into the, uh, the, the cellar in part of it. Uh, they poured concrete and it wasn't supported properly. That's going to be replaced and some interior structural beams, but it, you know most of the bones are still there. Town Council also approved plans to spend $10,000 for a new HVAC system at the Centerville Historical Museum and about $225,000 for renovations to the U.S. Custom House in Barnstable Village. Lyme disease is now considered an epidemic in some parts of the United States. Entomologist Larry Dapsis says ticks can also carry diseases like babesiosis and anaplasmosis. Dapsis says residents can actually treat their clothing with tick repellent before heading outdoors. Uh, my clothing, including my footwear, um, have been treated with a repellent with the active ingredient permethrin, which is different than the repellents most people are familiar with that are DEET based. Right. DEET is like for exposed. Like DEET or something sure. like that. Sure. So, but DEET based products are for exposed skin. Permethrin is designed to treat clothing. And the reason I'm treating my footwear is that nymph stage tick is down in the leaf litter. Yeah. So the first thing they're going to attach to is my footwear. And what I have found in working with these type of products is that if a tick is on an exposed or treated surface for 60 seconds, on average that tick will be dead in nine minutes. Really? That effective. And it's very safe. This is the same active ingredient you would treat an infant for scabies mite, same active ingredient you would treat a kid for head light. Permethrin sprays can be found at many garden stores as well as Eastern Mountain Sports. Dapsis says there are a few other steps individuals can take to prevent tick bites. Uh, certainly when you come in from an outdoor activity, the best thing you can do is just take the clothes you're wearing, throw them in the dryer. Um, ticks can go through a wash cycle, but you put them in a dryer for 20 minutes, little heat, drop the humidity, ticks aren't that tough. They're, they're done. Uh, certainly tick checks, uh, generally it's recommended, you know, shower. Uh, I've never seen any data on showers removing ticks, right. but it's another opportunity for a tick check, which everybody should do, um, including your pets. And if you do come across a tick on your body, Depsis says there are several options. There's a new program we just got off the ground in, in April. Um, we are partnering with Middlesex County, Franklin County, Nantucket County, and the Medical Zoology Laboratory at UMass Amherst. And each, we have a state-funded program, um, Community Innovation Challenge Grant, and each town is eligible for 100 free tick tests for all three principal diseases. To learn more about free tick testing, you can visit ag.umass.edu and click on Featured Service at the bottom of that page. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show is our business Barnstable segment, plus we'll chat with Finance Director Mark Milne. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.